What's going on guys? So today we're going to be designing some 3D printed wheels using Shaper 3D's new parametric modeling beta. This beta is currently free to download and is available on Windows, Mac, and iPad. So use the link down in our description if you'd like to try it out. And if you end up liking it, use code SLANT3D for 10% off your pro subscription. Now let's head over to Shaper and get started. All right, so we got Shaper open up here and we're just gonna go down here and tap create new project. And now we can explore around a little bit. So we are gonna be doing this project in millimeters, but if you tap this middle button up here in the top right, you can go ahead and change to whatever unit of measurement you're comfortable with using. Like I said, we're gonna be doing this in millimeters, so we're just gonna go ahead and keep that there. And then we're gonna make sure that this lock grid size is toggled on. And what this is gonna do is just make sure that these squares on our grid uh, don't change up on us or anything because that can get kind of annoying. So now over here on this left hand side we have this items menu and if we open that up there's nothing in there right now but this is basically going to be where anything that we create inside of this project is contained. So any sketches, bodies, planes, all of that will be held inside of the items menu. And then over here on the right hand side we have the history tab and this is going to be where all of the parametric magic takes place and it will contain basically a running timeline of each step we take throughout the design process. And that's gonna allow us to do some pretty cool things in terms of the way we constrain our sketches and our models. So let's go ahead and create a new sketch. And we're gonna grab this circle here. And we're gonna draw outwards from this origin point. And we're gonna set that to 70 millimeters. Cool. And now we're gonna draw another circle within that circle. And we're gonna set that to 20 millimeters. All right, now let's go ahead and move these out of the way. Let's see a little bit better. So now we're gonna rotate out of this view and let's grab both of these circles. And we're just going to extrude those to, let's do 30 millimeters, yeah. That'll be good. Now let's, oh, we lost our sketch. Let's open this items menu back up and turn that sketch back on so that we can grab this center circle. And then we are going to extrude that back by five millimeters. Okay, so now I wanna open up this history sidebar so we can take a look at some of the features that parametric modeling enables. As you can see here, now we actually have some stuff going on in this menu. So we have the initial sketch that we made and then we have the two extrusions as well. So let's open up this most recent extrusion that we made. Now, the main thing we're gonna be looking at here is the extent feature. And this is basically going to control how we define our extrusions. So as you can see, it is currently set to distance. And a little bit above that, our distance is set to five millimeters. So basically what that's gonna do is that's gonna lock in that extrusion to that specific distance. So if we open up this first extrusion and we change this to 50 millimeters, and that second extrusion is going to stay locked in at five millimeters. So no matter how much we push and pull on this first extrusion, whatever we change that uh, distance to, it's not going to affect that second extrusion because it is defined by that five millimeter distance. And this is kind of the general idea of parametric modeling. We create relationships between parts and that allows us to go back and make changes and everything else will update according to those constraints. So one of the really useful ways that we can take advantage of this is if we open up this extent menu here, let's see, we get this drop down with three options. We have distance, which is what we just talked about. And then we also have two object and two point. So if we select two object, that is going to allow us to now select an object that that extrusion is defined by. So if we spin around here and select this back face, now that extrusion is going to extend all the way to that back face. And this is super useful because now, if we select that first extrusion, we can change the width of this as much as we want. 
but that center hole is always going to extend all the way through to that back face because it is constrained to that object. All right, so let's get everything back to our original dimensions here. Cool. So now, uh, before I forget, let's select this front face or this front edge and also this back edge. And we're going to go ahead and just fill it this real quick to 10 millimeters. Okay. So now we need to create some screw holes so that this thing can actually attach to a vehicle. So we're going to start a new sketch here by tapping on this front face. And we're going to draw another circle from this center point here. And we are going to set that to five millimeters. And then we're going to draw another circle above that. And we're going to set that to three millimeters. So now what we want to do is select the center points of both these circles. And that's going to allow us to define the distance between those two points. So we're going to lock those in at six millimeters. And this is just going to give us the flexibility to be able to change the diameter of our wheel without affecting the mounting holes in the center there. So this is super useful if you want to create various sizes of a wheel, but you need that hardware to go in the same spot. So now we are going to spin out of that and we want to select those two circles that we just drew and we're going to extrude them back into our wheel. And it doesn't really matter how far we go here because we are now going to open up the history tab and we're going to use that extent feature again. So we're going to tap on that, select to object, tap on object, and then we're going to select the back face here. Perfect. So now our mounting holes are extending all the way through our wheel to that back face. So if we select this first extrusion and we extend that, our mounting holes are still going all the way through the part. So let's spin back around and we're going to zoom in here. And real quick here, I'm going to open up this items menu. I'm going to turn off that sketch real quick, just make things a little bit easier for us. And then we're going to select the outer edge of this top hole and we're going to fill it that. And then we're going to select our center hole and we are going to do the same thing. So the reason I'm doing this is because what we're going to do now is we're going to pattern that top hole around our center hole. And I wanted to make sure that we had that fillet already done uh, so that we don't have to go back and, and do it three more times after we make the pattern. So we're going to choose the pattern tool over here. We're going to make sure that's set to circular. And then we want to select this top hole and we're going to grab the pivot point and make sure that that is set to the center of our wheel. And then if we tap on quantity here, we're going to set that to four because that's how many holes we want to end up with. And then we're just going to revolve 360 degrees all the way around. So now we've got all four of our mounting holes and they are all already filleted. And if we spin around here, they are all extending all the way through to that back face. So let's do a quick check in and grab this first extrusion and extend this out. And we are good. All four of our holes are extending all the way to this back face. And this is why it's super important when using parametric modeling to be thinking about your order of operations, because each step that we take can impact things later on down the line. And an example of this is I am just now noticing that I forgot to fill it these back holes. But that is okay because now I can show you a pretty cool thing that Shaper did with this history panel. So I'm going to fill it this top circle and I want to make sure I'm doing this to the top circle because that's the one that we eventually ended up patterning. And now you can see over in our history timeline that fillet step shows up right below our pattern. So there's our fillet and there's our pattern. But because we created that fillet after we made the pattern, it's not reflected on those patterned holes. 
But if we just drag that fillet up above our pattern, now it's going to treat this as if we had done it in that order. And this is just super nice for those instances when we don't really plan accordingly. Um, just being able to have that freedom to make those mistakes, but still be able to go back and do them in the correct order. So let's go ahead and reset everything. And then we're gonna fill out that center hole. Now we're gonna spin back around and we're looking good. So let's go ahead and create some treads on this wheel. So we're gonna to wanna to create a new sketch and we're gonna go up to the top here. And now we're gonna select the rectangle tool and we wanna make sure that that is set to center. So let's draw that. We're gonna set that to three millimeters by, let's do six millimeters. That'll be fine. Now we're gonna rotate our view again and we're gonna zoom in and grab that rectangle that we just drew and we're going to extrude that all the way through our wheel. And then we're gonna open up this history tab again, and we're gonna do the same thing. To object, select object, back face, and now that tread is defined by the width of our wheel. So let's spin back around, and we're gonna to wanna to pattern this as well. So let's select that sketch, Grab the pivot point, drag it to the center of our circle. And then we're gonna set this total angle to 360 degrees. And let's set the quantity to 40. Uh, that might be a little too much. Let's go 30. Yeah, that should do. Cool. So the reason we didn't just uh, pattern that extrusion is because I wanna show you guys another cool thing you can do in this history tab. So if we open up that extrusion four there, and then we tap on profile. This is gonna allow us to add faces to that extrusion. So if we just go around here and select all of these and then press done, now all of those pattern sketches are going to be defined by that same extrusion that we made with our top tread there. So again, just another nice feature that they have for those times when you maybe overlook something and want to go back and make some changes. All right, I think things are looking pretty good here, but I do want to kind of round out this uh, center part of our wheel here. So first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is open up this history tab and we're gonna to go to that second extrusion that we made and we're gonna extend that a little bit more. So let's set that to 20 millimeters. And now we can tap on that outer edge and we're gonna fill it that. And we'll put that to 20 millimeters as well. And now that fillet's gonna extend all the way back to those mounting holes, which just makes things look a little bit nicer and also prevents us from needing screws that will extend all the way through our wheel just kind of shortens up that distance there. So now I wanna go in and turn off the sketch real quick so we can see things a little bit better. And then we're gonna go back into our history tab. And I know we've been doing this a lot, but it's good to just kind of get into this habit of checking in on things and making sure that everything is constrained properly. Because the last thing that we want is to get too far into this design and realize that things aren't behaving the way we want them to be. So this just kind of gives you a little bit of peace of mind going forward. All right, I think that looks like a wheel. So this last thing that I wanna show you guys is something that both 3D printing and Shaper can make really easy and that is creating product variations. So what we are going to do is we're gonna open up this history tab again and what you can do is long hold on any of these steps here and then tap insert breakpoint and that's going to revert your model back to how it was up until that point and now we're going to select the entire body and then duplicate it so that we can change up the features on the outside of this wheel so now we're going to hit add and select construction plane and then we're gonna make sure that the type is set to mid plane. 
And then we're going to select this front face and this back face. And that's going to create a sketch plane for us down the center of our wheel here. Now we're going to tap on that and that's going to start a new sketch on that plane. And we're going to make sure we've got our line selected here. And then we're just going to draw a line straight up the center of our wheel. And this will come in handy later. Now we're going to hit circle and we're going to draw that. We want to make sure it's at that intersecting point between the line we just drew and the top of our wheel. So let's set that to six millimeters. And now we can select the right half of that circle. And then we're going to hit more and we're going to choose this revolve tool right here. And this is why we drew that line earlier, because now we're going to use that as our center point to revolve this shape around. And that's going to create this sphere right here. So now we can select that sphere, make sure that we hit copy right here. And then we're just going to slide that over. Let's do six millimeters. And then we're going to do the same thing on this left side. And oh, forgot to hit copy. That's OK, because we need to do it now. Cool. And now we just want to pattern these three spheres around the exterior of our wheel. So let's do that. Set the angle to 360 and the quantity to 30. Nope, that's too many. Quantity to 20. And that looks good. Sweet. Now that I'm looking at it, though, I don't really like how close those spheres are. So let's go up to those top spheres that we patterned. We're going to select that movement slash rotation. That's where we copied the spheres. And we're just going to move those out one more millimeter. And you can see those patterned spheres are also going to move as well. And then let's just go ahead and do the same thing to the left side. And that's looking much better. So now if we go down to that break point that we created and get rid of it, all of those features on our original design come right back. And so this is just a really easy way to create multiple product variations without having to spend a lot of time or effort. But the nice thing is, is that both of these wheels are still defined by the same constraints. So if we needed to, let's say, update the dimensions of our mounting holes, we can go into our first wheel that we made and make those adjustments and all of our variations will update as well. So this is just one example of the many things that you can do by taking advantage of the benefits of mass production 3D printing, as well as Shaper 3D's new parametric based modeling.